an important part of any safe voyage is a safety brief. So let's, uh, let's chat. I've got my kill switch connected here. We're both wearing inflatable PFDs. I've shown you how to use yours. We have inherently buoyant PFDs in this console here, along with a fire extinguisher, a damage control kit, and a first aid kit. We have our ditch bag right here. In case things really go bad, this will be our best friend. My VHF radio is on channel 16. I've got the GPS on. It's providing a position should you need it. And if you need to make a call, you just press to talk. Um, help me keep a lookout. While we're out there, keep your head on a swivel. Look for any other boats coming, any kind of obstructions, logs, crab pots, or anything like that in the water. Uh, keep me posted on that, and let's go. The leading cause of boating accidents is navigation rules violations. From not keeping a sharp lookout, from operating at an unsafe speed, to inattention to operator error. Those navigation rules violations are the leading cause of boating accidents. So what we're going to do on this boat is we're going to operate under the concept that everybody is a lookout. You heard me in the brief tell him to help me keep a lookout. That is a smart operating principle to operate under. Everybody on board is a lookout. Everybody keeps their head on a swivel. The most common navigation rule that results in serious accidents is not operating at a safe speed. Our speed should be based on the state of visibility, whether there's rain, fog, clouds, darkness, background lights, any, anything that would preclude us from seeing the other vessels out there, waterways intersection where vegetation or there's intervening structures, jetties, adjust that speed down accordingly. Boaters find themselves in three basic kind of navigational situations crossing situations, head-on situations, and overtaking situations. The navigation rules tell us in each one of those situations, our actions have to be early and they have to be obvious. So let's get underway. We'll show you how to do it the right way and how to do it the wrong way. In each navigational encounter, we'll show you the right way to do it and then we'll show you the wrong way to do it. And more than anything else, I want to impress upon you not to be that guy. The first navigational situation is a crossing situation and the navigation rules say that in a crossing situation the vessel that has the other to its starboard or right hand side is the giveaway vessel. They have to take early and obvious action to evade the other vessel and should not cut in front of them. And here we have that guy holding his course for way too long, getting way too close and making the other boater feel uncomfortable wondering what that guy is doing. Now here are boaters doing the right thing. As soon as he realizes he's in a crossing situation, he sounds the correct sound signal and he takes early and obvious action to cut well astern of the stand-on vessel. The second navigational situation is a head-on situation. And in this case, the navigation rules tell each vessel that they should take early and obvious action and that that action should be an alteration of course to starboard so that each vessel brings the other down its port side. In this instance, both boaters are doing the wrong thing. Both boaters held directly on each other until both boaters were probably uncomfortable and wondering what the other one was doing. Don't be that guy. And here our boaters are doing the right thing. They're taking that early and obvious action by altering course appreciably to starboard. And in doing so, they're bringing each other well clear down each other's port side. In this navigational situation, it's an overtaking situation. The vessel being overtaken is a stand-on vessel. The vessel doing the overtaking has to give way, and they can give way by going to starboard or to port of the other vessel. In this case, that guy comes way too close to the stern of the vessel being overtaken, probably making them uncomfortable and wondering what that guy is going to do. In this situation, our boater does the right thing by taking early and obvious action and passing well to the port of the vessel being overtaken. Hi there, boating friends. I'm Paul Bernard, the Recreational Boating Safety Specialist of the Coast Guard based here in New Orleans. This year for National Safe Boating Week, we're starting here in New Orleans with a hard-hitting Fast and Furious segment on planning 
preparation and equipment. Preparation begins before you ever hit the water. Whether your state requires you to or not, it's a great idea to take a boating safety course. So get with one of our friendly volunteers from the Coast Guard Auxiliary or some other boating safety organization or even online and take a course today. Another important preparatory measure is having a courtesy vessel safety check done on your boat. Our friendly volunteers from the Coast Guard Auxiliary who teach that course will also come to your boat, check to make sure every, you have everything that you're required to have by law, and our boarding officers really love to see that. Before each trip, be sure to file a float plan, and with that float plan, you'll want to leave a picture of your boat. Another important part of preparation is that maintenance that we all love to do. Whether you do the maintenance yourself or take your boat into a service professional, don't skimp out on your maintenance. Before each trip, you've got to check the weather. Go online, look at a weather radar app, go to the National Data Buoy Center and look at real-time conditions. Look at the marine weather forecast and during the trip, regularly check that radar. We simply cannot talk about preparation without talking about life jackets, or as we call them, PFDs, personal flotation devices. You need a PFD, you may also need to be seen, so color counts. I don't want to hear your excuses for not wearing a life jacket. Modern life jackets are non-confining, they are comfortable, and they are just as cool as the people who wear them. Falls overboard are the number one cause of boating fatalities, so you need to plan on not if it happens, but when it happens. You have to have a plan for how you're going to get that boater back on board your boat. And if you're a solo boater, you have to have a plan as well. You'll need a plan for what you're going to do when your boat starts taking on water. The best first step is to install a bilge alarm so that you get that early warning and an early jump on damage control. You'll want to build a comprehensive damage control kit with some items that will help you affect emergency repairs. You need to first talk about the way water comes into a boat. Water will typically come into the boat either over the top, normally on account of bad weather, but we've already told you how to avoid that bad weather. It may also come in through the hull. When it comes in through the hull, it's normally through one of those below the water line through hull fittings. So you'll need to identify where those are on your boat with your boat on the trailer. Look at where they are and then know how you'll access them from the inside because access, as you all know, can be a lot of fun, right? 